Man who narrowly survived electrical accident receives world's first eye transplant. What? Yes, mornings. We are sharing we a do that? medical breakthrough, the first ever human eye transplant. A team of surgeons at NYU Langone Health performed this procedure back in May as part of a very complicated partial face transplant. And now for the first time, the patient has talked about his journey with our chief medical correspondent, that of course, Dr. John LaPook, who is also, by the way, a professor of medicine, not a coincidence, at NYU Langone Health. Aaron James has always... Did, did they connect the optical nerves? Did, 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 is it a working eye? He's been committed. Committed to his family, committed to his country, and committed to his career, helping to maintain America's power grid. But while doing that job on June 10th, 2021, he accidentally touched a 7,200-volt power line. Skill issue. His wife, Megan, will never forget the call she got from his boss. Aaron's been in an accident. I was, is he okay? And he said, from everything that I'm hearing right now and all of the details that I'm gathering, it's pretty serious. Doctors in Oklahoma and Texas did all they could to save... Jesus, he looks like Baron Harkman here. ...her husband of 20 years. His left arm had to be amputated above the elbow. He also lost his left eye. And when you saw his face unbandaged for the first time... I just took a deep breath and I said, all right, this is what we're dealing with. I love, I love hearing that from my loved ones, by the way, whenever I do anything. All right. The Arkansas native also lost his nose and front teeth and couldn't eat or drink normally. So he agreed to undergo a partial face transplant, including the world's first Jesus. transplant of a donor's eye. Could we include the eye with the face transplant? Why would people think that... Careful with live wire, lads. Couldn't. A whole eye transplant's never been done. This isn't the first first for plastic surgeon Dr. Eddie Rodriguez. In 2020, he performed the first simultaneous face and double hand transplant. So then when you suggested doing an eye transplant and you spoke to ophthalmologists or neurologists or your colleagues, what did they say? It's not possible. It's not going to work. When you went to Mr. James and you suggested doing something that had never been done before, what was his response? He didn't hesitate. He said, if I can help out other people, and if I can help out other sur other soldiers, it's worth it. And he had. Really I mean, if you look like that, to be fair, you also don't have that much to lose, right? <clears throat> like you're 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 not you know you're you're operating on a pretty. Yeah. In, in combat, right? Yeah, he had had three tours: Iraq, Afghanistan, and Egypt. So in late May, Dr. Rodriguez and his team at NYU Langone Health spent 21 hours transferring the donor's face eye socket and oh. the eye itself to James. A huge challenge was provided. So, so, okay, when they said part of the face transplant, what I thought they meant was we do it the same time and not literally we're, huh. Providing blood flow to the transplanted eye. It was an exhilarating moment to just see that blood supply coming to the retina. This is the 46 year old now. It's been just over five months since the eye and face transplant. God damn. That's crazy. I want to just put it out there right now that you have some trouble speaking still, right? Does it seem to be getting better? Yes, it is getting better. Until I can get some feeling in my lips and uh, get my jaw to open more and get some teeth. You also have a lot of things that are working a lot better than before. Yes, everything. It just blows my mind. I tell our guy, you gotta get close to a mirror. Was this on Medicare? Yes, in America, this procedure is free, actually. I just stare at it. You're now looking for mirrors. That's right. You know, now I want to go outside and let people see me, you know. After the surgery, a huge question remained. Would light shined into the transplanted eye be recognized by the part of his brain that processes vision? Yeah, this is what I want to know about. I want to know about, like, the optical, like, the connectivity. Vision. To find out, James has had two functional MRIs. I'm sure for visual it would be even more. Yeah, for this one, it's usually a lot more. Then we covered his good eye and checked the transplanted eye. Oh, yeah, oh that's wow. Good. And we saw a response back. Unironically, though, are experimental procedures like this sponsored by orgs or something?
Well, <clears throat> I mean, it depends on the procedure. My understanding is usually what happens is you have very talented surgeons or doctors or whatever who are basically like, hey, I've got a huge dick. I want to try something new. Um, and they'll find somebody who is in a position where even if things go poorly, there's not as much to lose as there might be for a person without any pre-existing medical conditions. And they'll give it a shot, you know, like experimental procedures. Dude's probably been wanting to do this for a while, too. I doubt this is something that he did in a whim. He's probably thought about and, like, maybe did some kind of um, experimental testing on the viability of an eye transplant, and then he saw an opportunity to try it for real, and it was like, ah, shit, well, let's, let's, let's have this guy sign an absolute encyclopedia of liability waiver forms, and uh, let's give it a go. And that's kind of how ex experimental medicine is done, you know? Point to where you feel it. Retina expert Dr. Vedahi Dadanya is his eyes. Good optics, yeah. Can we be more astonished? Every level, every test has further increased our understanding of how this eye is functioning within his body. Million dollar question, maybe billion dollar question. Is it possible that the brain could rewire itself in a different way to be able to actually see an image? I never say never. <laughs> Um, but you never say never at the beginning of this, and it worked. A lot of what we have... Experimental procedures like this are often free for the patient. Ah, yeah, that's true, because there is a greater risk with an experimental procedure, and you have to sign more liability waiver forms. And even though doing the procedure would be very expensive, and that cost gets waived, the idea is, from the surgeon's perspective, is that if they pull it off, they make way more of their money back in terms of, like, the publicity of getting the procedure done. Like, maybe the surgeon didn't accept any money for the procedure, so, like, overall, with like costs associated with procuring resources and the labor and use of the space and everything maybe the whole thing would have cost like a million bucks so he's out a million or you know um but then it's like oh here i am getting like a seven minute segment on cbs mornings like i'm gonna be written up in papers this is worth way more scene does not necessarily support that but that being said this is unprecedented so the question is is it possible yes okay i'm gonna take a look at your eye now okay Okay, looks pretty healthy. We don't have sight yet. Yeah. But I'm an optimist. And the one thing for sure that I can say now is that we are one step closer. Whether or not he will ever see out of his new eye, Aaron James is committed so once So by again. yet then, they would have, they connected the optical nerve, but they're waiting to see if the brain will recognize the signal that it's getting. Because the, the eye must be procuring a signal because the eye hasn't rotted, right? Like it's connected, the blood vessels are connected. There's There was visible blood vessels in the eyeball. So presumably it, it, there is an electrical signal. They can get signals, the brain just isn't processing it. Interesting. Yeah, that that like um, neural plasticity thing where you, where you try to get the brain to like, because theoretically, like our brains are pretty advanced computers, right? Like our brains can adapt to do lots of really cool stuff. You, you can see this in, like, the mistakes our brain makes, like in, with ghost limb syndrome. Like, a person who loses their limb will sometimes seem to have nerve sensations coming from the limb because they, um, uh, <clears throat> their brain thinks there should be a limb there. There's a lot of, like, weird, complicated shit there in, in, in terms of how our brain processes. Yeah, phantom limb syndrome. So, you know, they injected stem cells into the back of the eye to encourage new connections. I would love, I know that this is like a very stupid sci-fi way of thinking of medicine, but the idea of stem cells being something you can literally just inject into a problem area of the body and go like, figure it out. <laughs> if we could ever figure that shit out, that'd be pretty cool. You know, just like, yeah, here you go. Just like, you know, you know that picture of Eminem? Here, hold on. Yeah, yeah, this one literally like going into the surgeons with any serious medical problem and he just tosses a bag of stem cells at you but he it just splashes on your face like a water balloon you're healed let's go again this time to advancing medical science it could potentially help somebody with blindness from any cause from macular degeneration or whatever right. but also it could help somebody who was in combat who lost their eye i mean did, did that go through your head it's me doing it curse kickstarts it you know I, i'm all for it over time you think you'd be able to open up that eye the nerves are starting to come up i'm getting sensation really over here. that's crazy isn't that amazing years ago, like the, the fact that he's starting to get sensation means that even like five months later the 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 nerve the the, the nerve connections are still like forming and bonding to the brain it's pretty pretty amazing literally the moment ari when ethan reattaches his arm um, yeah.
Where's that gif? Where's that gif? Is there not a gif? Where's uh, where's the gif of him putting it back on? Damn it. Whatever. So they would have said there is no chance at all that it will work. And I suspect that a lot of people right now said there's no chance it will work. And yet... After I went home, every once in a while, I would Google, is an eye transplant possible? <laughs> and it would say, you know... It yeah, here we go. Thank you. It even reattaches the jacket. That's crazy. Real medicine. The nerve also needs to reconnect to the missing connection. Surgeons are unable to do each nerve cell. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Connecting blood vessels is, is well, I don't want to say it's easy, but, like, blood vessels are visible to the human eye, and nerve nerve connections are f not. <laughs> so, yeah, when, when you're, yeah, if you're reattaching anything, this is why, like, oftentimes people who get, um, like body parts reattached they can connect enough blood cells that the body can work the rest of it out but in terms of connecting nerve endings that's up to god pretty much this town it is not medically possible chat gpt and google are gonna have to catch up to you oh yeah <laughs> yeah i don't know it's a good cleveland oh for sure broken shield yeah we could be so much farther ahead of where we are right now blood vessels regrown repair nerves almost never do well they are for him i mean that's the whole point of the stem cell stuff right uh, like, you know, I'm sure it's very complicated, but that's the hope. Neuroplasticity, blah -de blah This guy needs to take immune suppressants for the rest of his life or his immune system will attack the transplant. Maybe. That's not always necessary, right? It probably is for, like, a face and an eye transplant. I know that immune suppressors are necessary for a lot of transplants, but not all. I, I, I think it varies. Wait, Vosh, then how does a reattached thumb still work? I, I think if it's your body that's being connected... Like, that probably means that it hasn't been separated for that long, and the... So, uh, my understanding is that the, the problem is, is that every single human's brain basically operates in a very slightly different uh, operating system. Like, very slightly different. Because the, the template for how brains are built might be the same for everyone, basically, but there's lots of, like, tiny variations in the way the brain develops and the way the neural pathways are connected. So if you reconnect, like, a finger that's been cut off, and, and you know, it, it sort of links back up. Your brain has a good understanding of how that works. There's like a compatibility there. But if you're connecting another person's body part or organ or whatever else, then even if basically their brain works the same as yours, there's enough tiny differences that it might never like fully connect or something. I don't really know. Like if you if you connect somebody else's finger where you lost a finger, like the movement of the finger is relatively, e like the muscle contraction, the bones, like these connections are relatively simple, but the nerve connections are so much more complicated and your brain's a, nobody knows how the brain works. We kind of know how the brain works. We have a vague idea of how the brain works.